Okay, today we're going to talk about the effects of business transactions on the accounting equation. Uh, in an earlier video in this series, we looked at account types and the accounting equation. Today we're going to further build on that. So let's go back and just kind of review what we know about account types and the accounting equation. As you can see up here, the basic accounting equation is assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. But what is an asset? An asset is a resource owned by the business. Probably one we'll be using a lot today is cash. Very important asset, one that the balance is constantly changing. In my personal bank account and in the business, constantly changing. Liabilities, in one word, are debts. Um, anybody that the company owes uh, money to or is, in, uh, is a liability. And stockholders' equity are the stockholders' rights to the assets of the business. We also talked about two other types of accounts, revenue accounts, um, which is sales of services or products to customers, depending on what kind of business you have. And that increases the stockholders' equity. And we also looked at expenses. Expenses are just those regular, ongo ongoing, day-to-day -day expenses of being in business. Uh, they're consumed or used up in the process of generating revenue. Uh, so again, as we uh, businesses have go through lots of business transactions, they spend lots of cash, buy things on credit, take in payments. And so we're going to look at how that affects the accounting equation, knowing that it will always stay in balance. So each, one, each line we do here, it should stay in balance. If you look up at the handouts, um, I hope you've downloaded the handouts that go with um, this particular video. Um, there is a problem to work. Uh, it says on September the 1st, Lee Laundry, MD, organized a professional corporation to practice medicine. And we're going to analyze how these transactions affected the accounting equation. All right. <clears throat> the first one says that Lee Laundry de uh, deposits, or Dr. Laundry, deposits $6,000 in a bank account in the name of Family Health Care PC in, in return for shares of stock in the corporation. All right, so what is happening here? He's depositing money in the bank account in exchange for stock. So what accounts would be affected here? Well, it sounds like the business is getting cash. Have to start out with cash to have cash to spend, right? So we would be increasing cash, which is over here on the asset side. Okay, what other account? Um, is affected here. Um, he's, he's purchasing shares of stock in the corporation, so that is increasing our capital stock account. So that will increase by $6,000. Okay, going on down to the next line, it says um, that the business borrows $10,000 from First National Bank to finance its operations. What happens here? Um, they're borrowing money, so we would be getting money, right? Cash. Uh, and it looks like it's $10,000. So cash is coming in for $10,000. Okay, when we're borrowing money from the bank, we're going to owe them, right? So that would be a liability. So liabilities over here are going to be increased by $10,000. So in effect, what we've done here is we've increased cash and we've increased, I'm sorry, we've increased the asset cash and we have increased our liabilities. And if you put the equal sign in there, you'll see that equals. Going back and reviewing the first line, we increased cash and we also increased stockholders' equity. So you can see that those equal. All right, on the um, transaction C here, it says that uh, family... Healthcare buys land for $12,000 cash. Cash is over here with our assets. So we're going to increase cash by $12,000. I'm sorry, we're going to decrease cash by $12,000. And what are we getting in exchange for that asset? We are getting land, which is also an asset. Okay, we have our equal sign here. This is a perfect example of something that only affected this side of the equation. 
You don't have to have something on both sides. We decrease the asset cash and we increase the asset land. So we decreased one asset and increased another. Okay, the next one, um, it says, during the first month of operations, Family Health Care earned patient fees of $5,500, receiving the fees in cash. Okay, so Family Health Care is um, increasing their cash. My favorite kind of um, patients are those that pay cash. Uh, so we would increase cash, which is an asset, by $5,500. Okay, what else increases here? When um, we earn patient fees, that actually would be uh, going into the account fees earned. And how do, how do fees earned? That's a revenue account, right? Because we're in the business of selling services to patients when, we're, when you're a doctor. Um, and all revenue accounts, when we increase our revenues, we also re increase uh, the stockholders' rights to the assets of the business. So we'd have 5500 over here. So here we increased the asset cash and we increased the stockholders' equity um, account as well. Again, it continues to stay in balance. In, tra in transaction E, it says family health care paid expenses during September as follows. Wages, 1125 They paid utilities, interest, and miscellaneous. Okay, it sounds like they just sat down and wrote out all their monthly bills. What happens when you sit down and write out your monthly bills? You spend money, right? You're spending your cash. So actually, if you add all of those up, they should add up to $2,900 in cash. So we're going to decrease cash by $2,900. What happens with all these expenses? Expenses also come out of retained earnings because we're actually decreasing the earnings in the business when we pay expenses. And so we could list each one of these separately. Um, we have wages expense, um, rent. See, wages was $1,125. Rent is 950. Um, utilities is 450. Interest 100. Again, all of these are decreasing the retained earnings. And if you can't see what I'm writing, these, these are all coming from your handout. So um, if it's getting too small. Okay, and the last one down here is 275 for miscellaneous expense. Another one of those questionable categories I try to stay away from. Okay, if you add up all those expenses, again, they should add up to the $2,900 that... Um, we decreased over here on the cash side. Right. <clears throat> and the last uh, transaction uh, for this month was that they paid $1,500 to the stockholders as dividends. All right, what happens when we pay dividends? What accounts are affected here? Well, if we're paying, cash is always involved, and we, have to, we would decrease it by $1,500. Okay, what else is involved here? Paying dividends. Paying, the process of paying dividends actually decreases retained earnings because the stockholders don't have as much rights to the many rights to the assets of the business when um, they've been paid out in dividends. So we would decrease over on this side the $1,500. <clears throat> And if we take time to add all of these down, um, you'll find that they should they should all balance. Okay, fifty one hundred over down here for cash is all we have left of that original six thousand. Um, land twelve thousand. 
liabilities here. Our tenth should be ten thousand when we add them down. That's pretty easy. There's only one. And capital stock stayed at six thousand. Back up here from the first transaction. And over here, adding down all of our expenses. Can we prepare financial statements from here? Absolutely. You could go back through here and figure out, um, I believe this was our fees earned and these are all of our expenses and that would enable us to prepare an income statement. If you'll notice the accounting equation is kind of a reflection of what's on the balance sheet. So if we looked at the bottom we'd have the total for cash and land and accounts payable, stockholders equity and retained earnings. And we can also prepare a statement of retained earnings. So actually just from analyzing transactions here, we have the information to um, complete the financial statements. But I'm not going to take time to do that today.